Hi everybody, it's your AP Bio teacher, Mr. Poser. Today we are continuing our unit on cell communication and the cell cycle, unit four in AP Biology, by discussing topic 4.6, which is aptly titled the cell cycle. So this is the kind of the second half of the unit here. Uh, we spent a while talking about cell communication, how it happens, what it does, uh, what, what signal transduction is, and talking about those pathways and how they can be altered, so on and so forth. And a lot of the ways that signal transduction pathways and feedback loops contribute to the overall wellness of an organism. And now we're getting into the cell cycle. Um, so this is the this is the latter portion of the unit right here. All right. Um, so how I like to start these videos off here is by discussing, you know, what does this have to do with the bigger picture of how life works and how like the central tenets of biology. Um, and here's another thing that organisms need to be able to do in order to stay alive. Um, and be considered a living thing. Um, in our last video, it was its ability to maintain an internal environment, a stable internal environment, when the external environment is always changing. That's called homeostasis. Another thing living things need to be able to do in order to be living things is that they have to be able to reproduce. Okay? Organisms come from pre-existing organisms. Cells come from other cells. All right? So in order for that to happen, life needs to reproduce. And life is continuing through the reproduction of cells through cell division. And there's two ways that that can happen, through mitosis and meiosis. Um, we are going to be studying mitosis in this unit, and we'll get into meiosis in unit five, which will come up later on. All right, um, so cells need to divide, all right? The whole idea of organisms being able to grow and reproduce, repair tissues, all comes down to cell division here, like this cell is doing right here. Um, so cell division is only one part of what we call the cell cycle and the life of a, and the cell cycle is the life of a cell from a formation to its division. All right. So cells make perfect copies of themselves, um, through the process of mitosis. And we're going to get into detail about that in a little bit. Um, the cell cycle is a highly regulated series of events for growth and reproduction of cells. And it looks something like this. Uh, we're going to walk through e what each of these phases are, and then in topic 4.7, we're going to discuss how this cycle is regulated. How do we get from G1 to S to G2, and then to M, or to, from I to M, or to G1 to G0. All right, that's going to be in our next topic, our last topic of Unit 4, 4.7. All right, so we're going to break down the cell cycle here, the life cycle of a cell. And really, we can only break it down into two parts. Um, so you see the outer ring of this image over here. There's an I, uh, which represents what's in this like orange band here, and M. I represents what we call interphase, which is 90% of the cell cycle. It's basically the whole time in a cell's life when it's not dividing, when it's not undergoing mitosis, which M indicates the mitotic phase. Um, mitotic phase includes both mitosis, uh, which is I've I've talked about this a couple times already, and more specifically, mitosis is the division of the nucleus and cytokinesis, which is the division of the cytoplasm. All right, so if we're talking about eukaryotic cells here, um, what we have to do is that we have to, if, if, if you're a cell and you want to make a copy of yourself, you have to copy all of your DNA first. You have to copy your entire genome, um, all the, co the collection of all of your genes on all the chromosomes and all the DNA um, in order to make a perfect copy of yourself. All right, in addition, during cytokinesis, you need to make copies of all the other stuff, all right, and be able to split up so that you have two perfectly identical, what we call daughter cells, all right? So the nucleus needs to divide in mitosis and all the other stuff outside of the nucleus called the cytoplasm that also needs to divide, all right? So think you know, like your mitochondria, lysosomes, all those different organelles, uh, those are going to be dividing during uh, cytokinesis. All right, so let's break down interphase here. We got four different parts of interphase. Um, obviously, M is just the mitotic phase, but we got a bunch of different parts of uh, interphase here. Uh, G1, G1 is also known as what we call the first gap phase, um, which is kind of inadequately named because scientists didn't really think anything happened in the G1 phase. That's why they call it a gap. Um, but really, a cell is just growing, and if it's a part of a multicellular organism, it's doing its specialty and it's doing its job. Um, and I'm putting in parentheses here about how many hours a cell, an average cell, sends in that, spends in that phase. 
All right, so an average-ish human cell is able to undergo its life cycle about every 24 hours. All right, so it goes through the cell cycle every 24 hours. Um, and a cell spends about five to six hours of those 24 hours in G1, just, you know, regular life doing its job. Um, then from there it goes into the S phase, and I'm going to come back to this in a second. The S phase um, is when a cell starts to copy its chromosomes. And so what are chromosomes? Well, we're going to talk about that in just a minute. But it's basically packaged up DNA um, that gets ready for mitosis. All right, so, you know, in order to move from one place to the next, you got to pack, right? So you get... So making these chromosomes and condensing DNA is like packing up and getting ready to move, uh, like from house to house almost. All right, and then from the S phase, oh, we spend 10 to 12 hours in the S phase, so that's a good chunk of time in the cell's life cycle. Um, from the S phase, we go into the gap 2 or G2 phase, and the cell prepares for division, which is about another 4 to 6 hours. All right, um, so if a cell, certain cells in the human body, such as like, say, neurons, um, they don't divide. They are what we call amitotic. They don't divide. Um, they don't. They, so once they're gone, you can't really re, can't really replace them, right? So you should protect your brain cells because they can't replace themselves. Uh, but why is that? Well, that's because they're in what we call the G zero phase. They have received a signal from you know somewhere else and some other cell um, to tell them not to divide. All right, so they kind of stay almost perpetually stuck in uh, almost like G1 phase, except we call it G0 because, you know, G1 proceeds to S, but G0 does not. Um, so in the G0 phase, no division occurs. We never reach the mitotic phase, and the cell may exit or enter this phase depending on the signal that it receives. Okay, so a cell that might be stuck in G0 um, might be told this, hey, stay in G0 until it receives a signal like, okay, you can go ahead and divide. All right, and we're gonna be, that's a, one of the ways that uh, the cell cycle is regulated. That's what we're, we're going to talk about in topic 4.7. All right, so there's our uh, phases of interphase. Now let's talk about mitosis. Now, mitosis, as we said, is the division of the nucleus. Um, I don't know where to put my head. There we go. Mitosis ensures that the transfer of a genome, which is all of a cell's genetic information, from a parent goes to two genetically identical daughter cells. All right, so one cell splits into two identical cells, um, and it has to transfer its entire genome. That means all of its genetic information, uh, whether that be DNA or RNA in particular types of organisms, but uh, it's going to be most often DNA. Uh, so this is the process by which it's going to both copy and transfer its genome. Uh, so I, sh I shouldn't say that. It's going to transfer its genome. It's copying its genome during the S phase uh, interface. Uh, mitosis allows somatic cells, which are non-reproductive cells, so anything other than sperm or eggs, to divide for tissue repair, growth, and asexual reproduction, and eukaryotic species. All right, so meiosis, that's the process by which sperm and egg cells are made, and then, you know, sperm and egg fuse, and you get a new, you get a, you get a baby, right? But uh, that's not going to, that's not what happens in these cells. The somatic cells or every other cell besides those. This is how they divide. This is how they reproduce. Uh, within the human body or any other multicellular eukaryote. All right, uh, so we're going to walk through the stages of mitosis one at a time. Um, on this diagram over here, look, it includes G2 of interphase uh, in the stages of mitosis, but it's not really part of the mitotic phase, is it? Um, but it is showing us that, you know, the DNA is starting to condense, and we got these two things called centrosomes over here, and we're going to talk about what those do in just, uh, in just a minute. All right, so the first phase that we're going to discuss, yes, I understand there's a lot of highlighting on this page. That's because we're going to talk about that in the next slide, actually. Uh, during prophase, which is the first phase, phase of the mitotic, uh, the mitotic phase, um, DNA is condensed and packaged into chromosomes. So like I said earlier, DNA, you know, there, you got a lot of it, and it's kind of spread out within the nucleus. It's stringy. It's kind of everywhere. Um, so what needs to happen first is that that DNA needs to be packed. It needs to be wound up and bound with proteins. Like it's put in a box almost um, so that it can be moved, right? It's got to be It's got to be easily transferable, okay? If you're moving like from house to house or, or from apartment to apartment or something like that, you got to pack up all your stuff before you, you know, put it in the moving truck and move, right? You can't just be like taking all your stuff, put it in your arms and like move it. It needs to be packed up into a box. All right, so that's kind of the analogy I use when I'm thinking about chromosomes. DNA needs to be packaged up 
so that it can be moved, and that's what chromosomes are. All right, chromosomes are paired into what we call sister chromatids. Uh, so these X shapes over here, these are actually a pair of chromatids that are exactly the same, right? We talked about just, just now, um, in the S phase, chromosomes need to be copied. That DNA needs to be copied because each cell needs to get a uh, exact copy of the genome, right? So these are what we call sister chromatids. It's a pair of the same chromosomes, and they kind of like, well, they kind of go like that a little bit. They're not like crossing, but yeah, you get what I'm saying. All right, uh, the mitotic spindle begins to form during prophase at the organelles called the centrosomes, which move apart. All right, I'm going to talk about what these are in just a minute. I know that's a lot of highlighting here, but take a look. Here's our centrosomes, and they start to form these little microtubules, these uh, what we call the mitotic spindle. And what's going to happen here is that the mitotic spindle is going to start pulling on those chromosomes so that we can split the nucleus apart into two, and the content, more importantly, the contents of the nucleus into two. All right, um, so here's just another closer look. This is like some random drawing that I found, um, but I guess it gets the do job done. Um, so as I was saying before, a pair of sister chromatids are two of the same chromosome, and they kind of form this like X-ish shape. Um, and what's binding the chromosomes together, or I should say the sister chromatids together, is a structure called the centromere. And the centromere holds these together. And it's actually the point of attachment for those microtubules. We're gonna talk, we're gonna see that in just a minute here as we walk through the phases of mitosis. Um, so the, the mitotic spindle attaches to the centromeres and is actually going to pull the sister chromatids apart. Oh no, no, it's a good thing. All right, um, from prophase, we get into prometaphase. And during prometaphase, the nuclear envelope fragments. If you remember from our unit two discussion, the nuclear envelope is the membrane that surrounds the nucleus. All right, so in order to get the contents of the nucleus out, the nuclear envelope needs to break down and fragment. Uh, chromosomes are going to condense even further, even more packing is gonna be done for the move, and the chromatids ha now have what are called kinetochores, which are protein structures that assemble at the centromere. So we were just looking at the centromere over here, right? Um, so kinetochores are gonna be proteins that, uh, that assemble at the centromeres and allow the mitotic spindle to attach and pull them apart, which is gonna happen, start happening in the next phase here, which is metaphase. The chromosomes align at what we call the metaphase plate. And now, the metaphase plate is not actually like a structure, like, oh, look, there's a plate where it lines up. Like, no, it's just it's just the area where it lines up. It's a geometric plane um, where the chromosomes are going to line up. And they need to line up, right, because the mitotic spindle needs to attach, uh, um, needs to attach to the centromeres and to the kinetic cores. And we need to make sure that each cell, each daughter cell gets exactly the same genome, the exactly the same chromosomes. Um, otherwise, you know, some defects or some problems can occur. All right, centrosomes arrive at the opposite poles, which are these organelles that are going to be pulling on the chromosomes. Check it out. Uh, the, the microtubules are starting to attach to the kinetic cores and to the centrosomes of these chromosomes. And what's going to happen next? Well, these things are going to start moving away from each other once again and they're gonna start pulling apart the chromosomes. All right, so that's what happens during anaphase, which is consequentially the shortest phase of mitosis. Uh, so during anaphase, the chromatids, they suddenly part from one another. So the centromeres are kind of broken down by the kinetic cores and by the pulling, by the, by the tension of the mitotic spindle, uh, these centrosomes start to move away from each other and actually causes the cell to elongate. Um, so it's a little different in a plant cell when it has a cell wall that kind of like stays rigid, but during, in an animal cell like this one, uh, the cell starts to elongate and the chromosomes, I got to expand this just a little bit, there we go, chromosomes start to move towards the poles. All right, so this is, uh, this is what happens finally when these chromosomes start to separate. Uh, from there, we enter telophase and the two daughter nuclei start to form. Um, so once these chromosomes are pulled apart from one another, uh, the mitotic spindle starts to break down. We start to redevelop a nuclear envelope, and the nucleoli, or the nucleolus of, a, of the nucleus, begins to reform. Okay? We start to unpack a little bit, get, like those, uh, allow those chromosomes to decondense um, so that, look, we're really starting to get into two different cells here. We have two separate nuclei with, you know, the same DNA, that we, our goal is complete. 
uh, the chromosomes as, yeah, so the chromosomes decondense, and this is actually the end of mitosis, all right? The nucleus has divided. They got each a set of the, uh, the, the identical genome. Um, so the last phase of the mitotic phase um, is what we call cytokinesis, all right? And cytokinesis is that's not technically part of mitosis. Why? Because mitosis is, deals with the nucleus dividing. This div deals with everything else, the cytoplasm dividing. All right, so cytokinesis is when two daughter cells appear and the cytoplasm divides. So look at there's our endoplasmic reticulum, there's our mitochondria, there's our lysosomes, whatever. Um, our centrosomes are still there. Uh, but what we have now, right before the cell really pinches off and the process is completely done and it enters G1 all over again, uh, the cleavage furrow pinches the cell into two. The cleavage furrow uh, is this right here, this kind of pinching off. Um, that begins to occur right at the end, of, or right during cytokinesis, so that it can finally shoop, pinch off, and you got two brand new cells with each their own plasma membrane, their own nucleus, their own everything. So it's pretty sweet. Uh, that's it for uh, topic 4.6. Please let me know if you have any questions, and we will see you in the next video. Bye.